Imagine waking up one morning to the shocking news of a fast-spreading virus that's turning people into flesh-eating zombies. It sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but in this what-if scenario, we're going to treat it like a real event, as if we're scripting a major film. Welcome to the channel, everybody, smash that like button, it tells the algorithm you're into this kind of content. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss what's coming next. And drop a comment below with your craziest what-if ideas. So, if you've got a wild what-if scenario you'd like us to break down and turn into a video, let me know. In today's video, we're going to stay calm and walk through how we'd react to a global zombie outbreak. We'll jump between possibilities. Maybe it's the fast, feral zombies from World War Z, or the slow, creeping ones from The Walking Dead. We'll cover survival tactics, how humans might behave, and even throw in a crazy twist at the end. Now, one important thing to remember is that experts agree. Planning for a crisis is never a bad idea. In fact, studies show these zombie stories actually help people think more seriously about real-world survival and disaster preparedness. So let's start at day one of the apocalypse. The headlines flash, outbreak. Suddenly, the unimaginable becomes real. In a real emergency like this, chaos would erupt instantly. People would panic, flooding grocery stores, gas stations, hoarding supplies, scrambling from medical necessities. Experts recommend keeping at least a two-week supply of essentials, food, water, and medicine on hand at all times. When it comes to water, the general rule is one gallon per person per day. Think of it like preparing for a major hurricane or a sudden pandemic, but now it's citywide and escalating. In those first critical hours, it's highly likely that governments would declare martial law or establish quarantine zones in an attempt to contain the situation. Researchers have warned that in the event of a zombie outbreak, time becomes the most critical factor. Without a swift and aggressive initial response, the risk of total societal collapse becomes extremely high. One model even showed that a zombie virus could wipe us out unless containment efforts were launched immediately and decisively. No pressure, right? While governments might try to react, regular people like us would be left to quickly improvise survival kits. Emergency planners recommend having grab-and-go bug-out bags ready, packed with essentials like a flashlight, knife, first aid kit, radio, batteries, water purifier, and if you have them, weapons and ammunition. A quick checklist should also include food, water, necessary medications, warm clothing, and other basic supplies. Since grocery stores will likely be emptied fast, you'll have to rely completely on what you already have at home. That's why learning basic survival skills, such as purifying water and providing first aid, becomes incredibly important. Ask yourself, do you know a simple way to purify water? Do you know how to handle a medical emergency with just a basic kit? These are critical things to consider, not just for a zombie outbreak, but for any type of disaster situation. Before we move forward, if you're enjoying these what-if videos, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Now, let's talk about the big question, what kind of zombies are we dealing with? Because that changes everything. There's a huge difference between fast, rabid hordes like in World War Z and the slower, stumbling types from The Walking Dead. Fast zombies are terrifying. They can sprint, leap, and overwhelm an area in massive swarms. Imagine an entire city block getting overrun in minutes. In that kind of outbreak, there's no chance of outrunning them. Experts agree that in a zombie outbreak, your best chance of survival is stealth, staying underground, hidden, and moving quietly, especially at night. If you spot one zombie nearby, chances are there are dozens more close behind, and they continue to multiply with every human they infect. Fast zombies, like those from World War Z, require you to be nearly invisible. But if we're dealing with slow zombies, the kind that shuffle and lumber, they're easier to avoid. You don't need to outrun them. Just keep your distance, move smartly, and outthink them. Regardless of the type, your top priority should always be to stay calm and alert. Even pets could be a useful early warning system. Dogs, for example, can sense threats before humans do. However, in the case of fast zombies, a barking or panicked dog could attract a swarm, turning an early warning into a deadly beacon. 
Zombie infections usually spread through bites or contact with infected bodily fluids, much like a grotesque virus. While fictional stories sometimes mention viruses like the alpha virus, real-world comparisons include things like rabies or parasitic fungi that take control of their hosts. If you're bitten, it's usually game over very quickly. That's why people would rush to fortify shelters, build barricades, and seek out secure locations like abandoned malls. Cities would likely fall rapidly under the overwhelming force of undead swarms, pushing military forces to flood the streets in an attempt to regain control. As mentioned earlier, the numbers are grim. A study of zombie outbreak models concluded that if the infection isn't crushed early, humanity could be wiped out within weeks. In response, we might see UN task forces rounding up survivors, closing borders, and bombing infected zones in desperation. It sounds insane, but this is the kind of situation where planning matters. So let's talk gear. What can you actually do with all this knowledge? Step one is preparing your bug out bag. You need everything, flashlights, flares, sterile bandages, a can opener. Yes, you'll need one and other basics. Don't overlook things like a bicycle, since pedal power could be one of the few reliable forms of transportation left when fuel runs out. Fuel isn't going to last in a zombie outbreak. It'll quickly become one of the most valuable and rare resources. Experts even joke that once society collapses, finding good gasoline will be almost laughable since fuel only remains usable for a few months. That's why having a bike is smart. It doesn't need gas and it still gives you mobility. After that, the next step is securing a base. Ideally, you want to be in a small town or rural area where there are fewer zombies to deal with and more access to natural resources like game for hunting, fresh water, and fishing spots. While going completely solo might seem appealing at first, long-term survival depends heavily on community. Even though Hollywood loves the lone wolf survivor, in real disasters, people tend to band together in groups or neighborhoods. Experts actually believe that having a common enemy the zombies could help unite people instead of driving them apart. Being in a group allows you to share skills. Someone might know first aid, someone else could be a mechanic, and pool resources, increasing everyone's chances of survival. Speaking of survival, there are a few basic skills everyone should learn. You don't have to be a Navy SEAL, but you do need to know how to boil and purify water, start a campfire, and treat minor wounds. Modern society has forgotten many of these essential old-school skills. If something breaks or someone gets injured, you won't be able to rely on the internet or smartphones. Once the power goes out and the networks collapse, there'll be no chat GPT or Google to look up how to properly clean a wound or make safe drinking water. So, it's worth preparing now. Maybe take a basic first aid course while you still can. As one survival specialist put it, even if Daryl from TV gets hit with an arrow, someone needs to know how to patch him up. In a world without emergency rooms, nurses, or ambulances, getting proper medical care becomes a serious challenge. If someone's injured, you'll have to handle it yourself, and you'll need to do it right. That's why having firearms or defensive tools becomes essential. In some countries, access to guns might be easy, case closed like in The Walking Dead, but in others, People would have to improvise with whatever they can find, baseball bats, garden tools, or even building zombie-proof fences. Quiet weapons become especially valuable, since gunshots will attract more zombies due to the noise. In this situation, silence and patience can be far more effective than bravado. Still, having a solid stockpile of guns and ammunition would definitely offer more comfort and security. As the weeks go by, governments and militaries would be in full crisis mode. Planes grounded, cities locked down, communications failing. With power outages becoming widespread, survivors might find themselves relying on candlelight just to get through the night. And remember, studies show that the only real way to eliminate a zombie outbreak in simulations is by using every weapon and resource available, consistently and without hesitation. This means strategic nukes could be used, while scientists race in underground labs to develop a cure or at least a working vaccine. Even in the middle of all this chaos, human nature has a surprising duality. History shows that people often still try to help one another, 
whether it's through their former jobs or in their neighborhoods. In the face of fear, kindness often still finds a way. One crisis specialist even noted that many people would rather suffer quietly than harm the innocent. That gives hope for new communities forming, groups banding together like an army of the living. Safe zones might emerge on farms, remote islands, or other places zombies can't easily reach. Trade posts could form, where bartering would replace currency, sunflower seeds for batteries, for example. But not everyone would be friendly. As always, there will be people who are dangerous, selfish, and cruel. So while some will try to rebuild and survive together, it won't all be unity and hope. There will be threats from both the undead and the living. Now, imagine we're five months into the outbreak. The attacks haven't been completely stopped, but they've been contained to specific areas. Then comes the turning point. Scientists announce a possible cure. It might sound unbelievable, but maybe some survivors already have a natural immunity, or perhaps someone discovers a way to reawaken part of a zombie's brain. Think back to the World War Z movie, where one man wasn't attacked. Maybe something like that happens here. If a vaccine were developed, it would trigger mass rallies, frantic searches, and desperate missions to secure it. Now here's a wild twist. What if the real shock isn't that a cure exists, but how it works? Imagine a tiny percentage of the population already carries the zombie virus, but never turned, making them humanity's last hope. Sure, it's a story we've seen in a hundred movies, but you never really know. So, what happens if the zombies actually win? What would you do? In the beginning, the most important thing is fast, decisive action. Of course, your first instinct would be to protect the people you love, but you also need to think beyond that. Short to midterm planning is key. We've already talked about the chaos at the start, the emergency preps, and the differences between fast versus slow zombies. We all agree that a World War Z style outbreak would spiral out of control almost instantly, while the Walking Dead version would be far more manageable. Still, when it comes to survival, the core strategy doesn't change. Stockpile water, learn first aid, and find your people. In the end, even though the zombie apocalypse is fiction, the skills and mindset needed to survive are very real. Civil defense experts and academic studies have shown that exploring these scenarios, using zombies as stand-ins, can actually help improve real-world disaster preparedness. So staying informed, staying calm, and working together becomes the ultimate survival plan. But think about it. How would you survive? Would you hole up in a shopping mall, barricade the entrances, head to the roof with a sniper rifle? Let me know what your plan would be.